Welcome back. In this video, we will have a look at the list view in Flutter. So how can the list view help me to show items underneath each other in a list or maybe next to each other in a list? So what is a list view in Flutter? It's basically the same concept as using a column or a row. But in this case, it's a scrollable column or a scrollable row. So let's get into this and see how it works. At this stage, I've got a scaffold. So I've created a new project folder called list view example, and I have deleted everything. And I'm not sure if you noticed that you've got actually some errors in this widget test every time we are doing something. So what I'm going to do here is to just delete everything there in this test package so that you get rid of those errors. And you can even remove those um, imports there because we won't be using this test folder currently. Okay, so let's go back to main.dart and then there's no errors. So in the main.dart, I've got the material app, I've got the scaffold, and for the scaffold, there's an app bar. Now remember for scaffold, there's also a body. So you, there you can see the body widget. So let's use the body widget. So after your app bar, that stops there, let's create a body. And for the body, let's create a column. And for this column, we will have children and the children we will start off with a container and this container will contain my list view. So remember, if you want your whole screen to be a list view, then you will start the body with your list view. But if you want to have maybe a list view at the top and carry on with some other components at the bottom, this is the route you will take. You will start with a column and then put your list view as one of the elements inside of the column. But make sure you place a container over it to give it a specific size. So in this case, I'm going to have the height of the container. Uh, let's say we make the height 400 and we have the child of this container as the list view. Now, if you hover over that list view, you will see there's a lot of components that you can set. For example, the scroll direction is vertical, which means we will have a vertical scroll in this list view. And uh, that's the default values. So it's normally vertical. But you can also set the reverse to false, or it's currently false, which means that your first element in your list will be at the top, obviously, then the second one and so forth. If you set reverse to true, it's going to go from the back, will start at the top and it goes down. So uh, just some properties that's already set for us. Reverse is false. The vertical axis is used as the scroll direction. And there's a lot of others that you can set here, but we will not handle all of these. So let's just look at the basics of how to use a list view. One of the most important ones there is probably this children one, because that's the list of widgets that you actually want to display. So for example, we can have the children here and I can have a lot of text widgets, for example, and I can say hello world. Well, let's not say hello world. Let's say something like Peter. And then let's just make the style a bit better there. So we'll have text style. And for the text style, we will have the font size a bit bigger. Let's say the font size should be 20. And the color and its colors dot, let's say blue. Right, so that's one element as a list of children. And this children must all be widgets. So you can add any type of widget in here, whether it's a picture, whether it's text, whether it's whatever type of widget that you want. You can even add rows in here. Okay, so let's let's just add a few more there. Let's let's add three of them. And let's make this Paul and John. And let's run this quickly. Right, so there you can see the items listed underneath each other. And if you try and scroll by holding down, you can see that scroll animation. So it's basically from the top. And if I scroll upwards, you can see this is basically the line there where we've got this container of 400. And everything below that is what we will add as the second component inside of the column. So the container is the first one. And we can maybe add some text at the bottom. Let me just copy one of these. Uh, text ones that we already did. So I'm going to copy this one, paste it at the bottom, and let's say hello world. And let's make the font size 70, and let's have the color as black. All right, let's run this one again, and you can see hello world at the bottom. So there's your list view. If you scroll, you'll see the animation. And you can see Hello World is directly underneath it. 
Now, for this list view, we can add some padding there. So let's go to the padding property there. We use edge insets dot all, and let's make it an eight there. Now, if you run it again, you can see that we've got some padding at the top and on the left and on the right and at the bottom. So you'll also see that there's some padding. If you scroll again, you'll see some padding at the bottom as well. Okay, so just for example, let's make this one 200 in height so that we do not have that much items that we need to put in there in order to see it scrolling. And let's add a few more there. So I'm going to take this, copy those three, paste it and maybe paste it again. Let's see if it's if we can see a scrollable list now. Right, so now you can see we can scroll this list up and down. Okay, so what is a list view? It's basically just a column in this case or a row if you wanted to put a row there as well. Let's just go back to the text and remove those extras that we did. So for example, we can go to the list view also and we can have a scroll direction. And remember, it's, it's currently vertical, but we can set it to horizontal as well and run it again. And now you can see it's a list of items next to each other like that. And then we will probably need to have something like a sized box there. And we can set the width to something like, let's say, 20. And I will have that sized box there, the end of that one, and maybe at the end also. So if we run it again, you will see that Peter, Paul and John has got some space in between them. And now it's scrollable from left to right. Right, so in order to see this in action, let's just add a few more components there. So let's take this and we copy and paste them. So I'm going to paste them two times and let's run it again and see. Okay, so what I've done is to just take those few that we had here, copy and paste them so that we have enough to see on that row. And now if you click on them and you start scrolling, you'll see it scrolling from left to right, right to left, and you can see uh, the animation, the scroll animation that comes up there on that side and on the other side. So your list is still in this container, but it's now horizontal instead of, instead of vertical. Okay, so at this stage, yes, we are able to add children in a list view and show them quite nicely. So let's look at another version of your list view. So in the main method, I'm going to create a few widgets here. So I'm going to say var, let's call it widgets. And we set the widgets inside of a list. Now, one of the nice widgets that comes with the Flutter library is called a list tile. Now, because the concept of a list tile is used so many times in coding, they've created this class called list tile to help us a bit. So before I go into that, we, this is the, the list of widgets that we will show there instead of putting them inside of the list view here. So I'm going to remove this list view now and I'm going to use the list view, but not the normal constructor. I'm going to use a named constructor, which is a builder that can help me to build my list view. Now for this builder, you will see there's an item builder as one of the properties that we must have. So I'm going to go and search for item builder. And when you choose item builder there, it will give you this options where you can actually choose the first one or the second one there. So in this case, I'm going to use item builder. It's going to have a context and it's going to have the index value in the list that I'm going to use, which is the widgets list. And it's going to help me to lay out the widgets from this list at the top. So the only thing I will need to do here is to go and say return going to widgets, which is the name of the list at the top, and I will use the index where it's currently at. So instead of running a for loop or a loop to run through every element in the widget and setting them in the list view, I will just use this builder named constructor that takes in an item builder, which is a function that will have a context and an index, and it will efficiently run through every element inside of widgets by passing in the index. So the first time it runs, it will have the first item, and then the second item, and then the third item. So you can have uh, different widgets in here. And remember that your list view is still actually returning only widgets, even if you're using this builder. Now let's just add some content for this list styles. So why am I saying the list style is quite nice to use? We can have, we can in fact also use the text widgets that we did previously and just say, 
hello world and run it and there's only one widget so it will only show one widget there at the top and the default will still be vertical again which means that we will have it from top to bottom right so it gives us this nice error there uh, because we haven't specified something very important and that is the item count so in order to get the item count it basically says how many items are in this one thing that we are iterating through and that is basically just widgets dot length so if we run this again our error should be gone because now we've indicated how many items are there and how many times it should execute inside of this builder function right so now the error disappears and we can see hello world at the top so you can have any type of widget inside of a list and display all of those widgets iterated through in the list view now let's look at that list style i talked about so this list style is very nice in the sense that it supplies for me a leading widget, a title widget, a subtitle widget, and a trailing widget. So I'm going to do something very simple here. I'm going to start with the leading. And for the leading widget, I'm going to have some text. And let's just say we place a J there. Now let's style this J a bit. So we stay style. We use the normal text style. We have the font size as 40. Let's make the font weight a font weight dot W800. Okay, so let's just remove this on the left hand side so we can see. And I'm going to save the list style now. Let's just put a comma there also. And after that one, so it's nicely formatted. Okay, so there's the leading widget. It's going to be a text widget that shows J. The style will be font size 40. And it will be a W800. Now that's the leading one. Now let's, after the text widget, let's use the title widget. The title widget, exactly the same thing. So I'm going to copy this widget, which is the text widget there. Going to copy it, paste it. Instead of saying J, we'll say John uh, Rambo. Uh, in this case, let's not style this one. Let's just have the text uh, John Rambo. Let's have a subtitle. And let's say something like, never runs out of bullets. And then for the trailing one, we will have one that's formatted again. So let's use the last one as invincible. There's one comma too many there. Invincible, let's have it a font size of 15, but also bold. Right, so I'm going to save this and run it quickly. And let's see how it displays. Now, this is only one widget now. It's actually just one list style. But the list style has got a leading widget, a title widget, a subtitle widget, and a trailing widget. And you can see now it looks like this. And we've basically done nothing but just given some of the widgets that we want in those different places. For example, there's the leading. That's the title. That's the subtitle. And this is the trailing widget. So you can see how this can work nicely with a picture there maybe and a picture at the, at the end or a specific icon at the end and then some data there. So the list style is really helpful also when you're working with a list view in order to show some items. But uh, remember that you are limited on what you can do here. So if you want to create your own type of list style, then you will use a row with, for example, the first item text, then you'll have a column inside and then end it off with another widget at the end. So it is important to also know how to do this on your own without using actually the list style. But in most cases, you will be fine with only using the list style unless you want to do something more, but a bit more specific. So for example, we can take that same list view again or list style again, add another list style, maybe say this one should be P, and this one is going to be Peter Pollock. Let's say he's a bowler. And let's say 50 wickets. Okay, so if we run that again, we will see a second item in the list, which will be Peter Pollock. Okay, and the list is still scrollable there. So if I take this whole list style again, and I paste it again and again, and I run it, you will see it will we will start getting a list that is scrollable so you can see we can scroll between the items in the list 
Okay, so that is the basics of the list view. By the way, as part of this list style also, you will see that there's one very helpful function, and that's the on tap function or the on long press function, which is normally something that we do when there's items in a list. So, for example, you can use the on tap function there using an anonymous function, just opening and closing brackets with opening and closing block brackets. And then whenever it gets tapped, you can do something in here. For example, print tapped, something like that. So when you click on that one, which is the, let me just see which one is that. That's the second one in the list, the P. So if I run this now and I click on the second item in the list, you can see it says tapped. I clicked it three times, four times, five times and so forth. And you can see tap there. It's saying this uh, number there because I'm repeating exactly the same line printed out. Okay, so that's just the, the basics of the list style and also the basics of your list view. Very important to take from this that your list view dot builder is a lot more efficient if you want to show something that is inside of a list. And by the way, this on tap function, what we will normally do is to not have a list of widgets here, but have a list of objects of your own type of class. For example, uh, we can have a class defined that's got an initial of a J and it's got a, a name property and it's got, uh, let's say, a subtitle property and it's got a stats property, for example. And then you create objects of that and place them in a list. And then when you are returning the widget here, you can return your list style widget and then have the properties assigned to specific values in the list style. And why would we need to do that? Because in here, you can then also run the on tap so that you have one on tap for every single thing that you want to do. Right, so that's it for your list view. Hope you've learned something. See you in the next one.